This is National Museum of US Air Force, the largest Air Force Museum in the world. We're gonna try to cover all of this in just two hours that we have before our flight and we're gonna give you a quick tour. So let's start. There is so much to see. I don't even know how we're gonna get through this, but we have exactly two hours and 25 minutes. We just arrived in Dayton, Ohio, and the place we picked to explore for the next couple of hours is the Air Force Museum, the largest Air Force Museum in the world in Dayton, Ohio. It's free. We're gonna try to do as much as we can and Try and find the best things. There's World War II Gallery, Southeast Asia War Gallery, Cold War Gallery, Korean War, early years. And then on the other side, there's a Missile Gallery. And then you go to the Presidential, the Global uh, Reach Gallery, Space Gallery, and Development. You can Wait, make a donation we do. and That's our pick up a and map. Our do you know how many buttons an astronaut has to know how to use? 500, I guess? Uh, we're like 2,000. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Right. Our strategy is, yeah, we're going to walk all the way back, start at Gallery 4. That's where the presidents and experimental space planes are, and then come 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so we're walking in the main highway, and so this is what the highway looks like. We have two more galleries to go through. Okay, this is now Building 4. Within Building 4, you got your presidential planes, global research, space, and R&D. This is Starlifter C-141C. How cool and massive is this thing? This is the XC-142A. And then on the other side is a C-130. Heading towards Air Force One. Like that's the current model. Is that made of Legos? Oh yeah, it is a Lego model. What do you call that one? Dwayne? We're going to go into Air Force One. There's the galley. It's actually a full kitchen, not just the galley, because if there's a an oven and a stove top, I assume they were actually cooking here, not yeah. just servicing this, this the food. A coil stove top up there, an oven back here. And a microwave too. And, a microwave. and then of course communication. Oh wow, well, that looks good. Lounging area. Oh, I like these small conference rooms. Yeah. Which obviously are not rooms. These are just tables with some chairs. Okay, they so the have President Kennedy's conference room. Like this, this would have been their Zoom calls at the time, like through these phones if they're in different cabins. Yeah. It's about, uh, look, they even have a toilet. They have another kitchen. Yeah. Wait, there's a and an oven back here. The flight crew of Sam 26,000 made room for President Kennedy's casket by removing this partition and the first four seats. So you got to check out this full tour of uh, the Presidential Air Force One. Incredible. Especially I like how they did it. Keeps everything intact. You're not touching anything. Next up, after the President's plane, Okay, Lockheed VC-121E, Columbine 3, this, that's Dwight D. Eisenhower. So we're going to go check out our second plane. Walk through this, and if you pass through this, then you're going to be fine inside the plane. Let's go. So this is the propeller plane. So when you come in, check out the layout and setup in here. Again, on this plane, you have conference rooms which look amazing to be on a flight and just be having a meeting another kitchen galley you got a mini oven down there a full sink toaster ovens that they were toasting their bread that's pretty cool by the way the luxury of toasting your bread in a plane <laughs> may not sound exotic to some but how cool is that okay that's the kind of meeting i want to have oh a bunk bed <laughs> <laughs> on top of 
And there's another one here with some privacy. Look at those windows, how massive are they yes. for an airplane? Yeah. Film projector. A sofa that turns into a bed. And a radio. <laughs> And look, check out the bathroom. Of course, beside the Air Force One, you can also check out Aero Commander uh, U4B. And then they also have some other Air Force planes. But the highlight in this section is definitely Air Force One. And this is the last one, a Gulfstream Aerospace a C-20B. Okay. Okay, this is the sacred cow, uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt, a VC-54C. So this entrance picture in the plane is going to be a first because I have to bend down. <laughs> okay, so this is the view from the top. You can see Air Force One in our colors, but we're going to go into Franklin Roosevelt's plane. I'm going to bend down. Yes. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Right at the entrance, you have the galley with a full-size fridge, a sink, toaster oven, and all their containers for their food. We got bunk beds on the other side. This is how narrow my camera barely fits Ooh. this width. This is actually pretty claustrophobic. You can see their meeting area. You can imagine the President of the United States sitting here making decisions. Oh, I love these windows. Look at the shape and the size of them. Yes. Oh, did you see the president's seal? No. Oh, that's very cool. What is that okay, we gotta find out the name of this plane. That is a beast in itself. But we'll give you a sneak peek of the inside. Look how big this is. That's a troop carrier. Look at that C-130. This is a XC-142A. Yeah, this is the C-119J X-45A. That's a Boeing Joint Unmanned Combat Air System. Okay, we're gonna go into the space shuttle to take a look. Look at the view from the space shuttle, especially this masterpiece. It's the Lockheed C-141C. This is the training for the astronauts. Like astronauts will get trained in this um, shuttle. shuttle. I think they would learn how to fly the space shuttle here. This is a warning sensor on the shuttle. Okay, here is the X-13. This is the vertical takeoff airplane. Okay, my favorite helicopter is up there. The helicopter is the XH-26. It's the Jet Jeep. It's a 1951 design. Wow. Five prototype Jet Jeeps were developed and they performed well, but they were never put into production. This is the XV-3. Early 1980s in great secrecy. <laughs> The Tectic Blue aircraft tested advanced radar sensors and new ideas in stealth technology. This actually does look like an alien spaceship. That is so weird and cool looking at you the know, same time. <laughs> if we see this in a movie, we would be like, oh, look at Hollywood. What do they make? But right? How yeah, incredible, totally. unusual looking plane that is. XF-84H, a Republic. We actually live very close to the Republic Airport. We did our first test flight um, as pilots uh, from Republic Airport in Long Island, New York. Oh, this is the North American XV-70A Valkyrie. What an incredible 
I started walking the length of it and it took so long. So even in the dark corners of this hangar, uh, number four, the planes are incredible, one-of-a-kind airplanes. What is your favorite plane in this whole gallery? The presidential planes, the space uh. aircrafts? Mine is the Valkyrie right above you. I actually, thing. I think I would have to agree with you as much as I love the commercial airplanes and I enjoyed the presidential airplane. This one is so unique and so impressive. Of course, as we're heading out, I even missed U.S. Air Force 935. That's here parked right under the Valkyrie. All right, Aldia, what did you find? Oh, this is the Apollo 15, which was the fourth successful moon landing mission. And it was the only with all U.S. Air Force crew. 1971, there. crew of three. And Just it landed so. in Pacific Ocean near Hawaii. How did the people survive in there? In Hawaii, they have trackers probably. Oh, people survive because this is meant to bring you back. Okay, so from gallery number four, we're gonna say goodbye. We're gonna head over to, I think where the missiles are. From gallery number four, we are heading up. You know, Alia, this is reminding me of the Arctic ship tour we did in Oslo, Norway. The view from the top, they have tons of galleries and pictures everywhere we went yeah. up so we can look at the the ex uh, expedition ships and again we had limited time because we had to catch the flight the same day Welcome to gallery number three. So from four, this is your view. And this is the Cold War gallery. Oh, I see a spy plane up there. So oh, we just saw the this wheel. We had to come and take a picture. This is XP-36 landing gear. Okay, this is 10, 12, 12 feet high? Jeez. We're just in a maze of uh, jet engines, propellers, but I've never seen a cockpit that opens three different places. So I can't wait to read what this aircraft is. All right, a Convair B-58A Hustler, a nuclear deterrence. Oh yeah, that's a deterrence. Bomber KC-97L. Stratosphere or st stratosphereator? Freighter. Freighter. Oh, I'm gonna get butchered up in the comments for naming these planes, but we're running and trying to read a little bit about the history of these aircrafts in a short amount of time, just panning through. You guys can see how much history is here, both from an aviation perspective and from a uh, US Air Force uh, history. Perspective. The Boeing WB-50D Super Fortress. They even have a Villies quarter ton Jeep here next to this Dying. beast. Now we are walking towards developing the bomb. This is the view from the back, from the right hand side if you're coming from the front of the gallery. A uh, bunch of very cool Cold War era planes. When you're coming here, don't forget to look up. You can also find descriptions of the planes hanging from the ceiling all around. You just got to look. This cool little plane is a F-94C Starfire. Again, it's from the Cold War era. And you can actually see on one side all the rockets. Dennis the Menace. By the way, did you notice that, is that a rocket with its own propeller and a wing? No. What is it? It's a radio plane. It's a radio plane. Now that's cool. It was built in 1945. Built in 1945. That 200 miles per hour. 200 miles per hour his? Wow. Yeah. The old one that's small, it's very fast. Now we are looking at a Conair B-36J Peacemaker, which is a massive massive plane. Alia, is this the largest plane in this gallery? Yeah, that's what the lady at the front told us, that this is the 
uh, biggest plane that they have in their whole collection. Even in the bigger museum. than the Valkyrie? I think so, yes. That's what she told us. So this is where we are in gallery number three and in comparison to Valkyrie in gallery number four, this is the size comparison. So the largest plane in this whole museum is this. Right here. Which is again a Conair B36J Peacemaker. Uh, another plane I saw somewhere over there, it was only 360,000 pounds. Yeah. Well, this one's only 410,000 pounds, and when it's also loaded. Oh, wow. So it's pretty light. So, yeah, it's pretty light for a size of plane it is. The B 36J cruised at 230 miles per hour, but for additional burst of speed, its four General Electric J 47s increased the maximum speed to 430 miles, 35 miles per hour. So the two at the end are the four General Electric engines. So those are engines as well? I think so. Okay, so the largest plane, again, Gallery 3, after that, we're going to turn our attention to this. High subsonic is the speed. And this is Northrop Grumman B2 Spirit, the global spread of sophisticated air defense systems in the 1980s threatened the U.S. Air Force ability to destroy an enemy's most valued targets. To overcome this threat, the USAF incorporated revolutionary low observable or stealth technology into a long-range bomber capable of delivering large payloads of conventional or nuclear weapons. And look how clean the body is underneath this plane. Like there's no bumps or things sticking out. Yeah. This is basically just a weapon carrier and you can see, look at this picture to give a full idea of the unique shape that B2 Stealth Mamber has. It's the fastest plane in the world. I will say the staff here is awesome. There's a gentleman with the suit on. He took our pictures. Uh, so funny. Thank you so much uh, for everyone who's been here. They're very friendly to us. Uh, we're walking around with a camera recording, jumping around, getting excited by um, airplanes, but the staff is actually very accommodating. So after that bomber, we are looking at a AGM-69A SRAM. I was going to pronounce it SRAM, but it's just another massive plane. Uh, it's incredible. You know, you think of fighter jets and these things don't come in mind. Or you think of bombers, and even though you have seen pictures, but seeing them here live, they're just incredible how huge they are. And on this side of the gallery, you got a few um, helicopters and the A-10 Thunderbolt. We have seen, um, Alia, do you remember we saw a A-10 Thunderbolt in uh, South Carolina, there was a aviation park where we did a picnic. North Carolina? Yeah. South Carolina. Oh yeah, you're right. Here's a better view of the A-10. Right, so that's the Israel Angel of Death. Uh, you can see uh, the machine guns on the side of this plane here. And then also in the back of these. That's just there is a reason why they call it angel of death tornado gr1 my talk and of course my favorite is the f111 f just mean looking jet okay now this is the f117a nighthawk another spy plane i'm going to call it futuristic alien looking ship this is a mig 29 it's a russian plane i think the only russian plane in this whole gallery. You can see the Russian flag on it. Or I should say Soviet Union flag. And here's a better view of the MiG. An RC4. This is the F4G. And so this is the SR-71. It's an incredible. Why don't we go upstairs and take a quick peek at the SR-71. Okay, here's a view from the top. You can see how 
massive this gallery is. And here is the SR-71. It's a very cool looking plane. Now you can see we actually walked all the way to the back, checked out all those fighter jets there, SR-71, uh, this monster which is RB-47B. I think it says it's a Boeing, but it has one, two, three, four, five, six engines on it. And then uh, this is the largest airplane in this whole museum. Ten engines. Like his said, ten engines. Ten engines. That's crazy. There's two jet engines and then there's six propellers on each side. The uh, mom and Nisa are sitting under the largest plane in this museum. We got a great view of uh, gallery number three. We only have half hour left to do first and second gallery, so we're gonna breeze through the rest of it. But what an incredible, I would say budget all eight hours, um, just so you have enough time to come here and have some snacks. And just remember, soda is not permitted in the museum galleries, only water. All right, kids, let's go look, check out gallery one and two. Okay, here's Alia. You know where we were? We were up there, that's where the cafeteria is, looking at this monster. But guess what? This is the largest. It's so massive. Like it's taken over this gallery. I can't even imagine how they got this in here. Yeah. Okay, so this plane has two tires in the front and two tires in the back. You probably have not seen this. This is a twin Mustang. These are two Mustangs joined together. It's F-82B twin Mustang. So if you can see, that's where they're joined. Two planes together. That's very unique. Okay, there's only four type of airplanes here. They have fighters, bombers, reconnaissance, and I forgot the four types. So if you know, please comment below. Carriers. Yes, maybe. Gallery number two, which covers Southeast Asia War and the Korean War. Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, 1961 to 1973. That's First, a B-52D. A B-52D. Again, you have an airplane that's literally taken the full width of uh, this hangar. Uh, they have to actually um, stand it sideways uh, just because how large this thing is. Alia, do you see the number of bombs on it? That's a lot. You say one a picture? Look at the tail on the top one. And Alia, did you see where the gunner would sit? Oh. And those are the four At guns. the bottom? Yeah, the glass on top. Oh. Yeah. Like, so the gunner's sitting behind that oh. tail because the small aircrafts would attack the airplane and then he would shoot them down. What we were looking at was the B-52 Stratofortress in Southeast Asia. We're looking at the tail in the back. It's a beast. Okay, Ali and the kids are going to the simulator ride. So this is Douglas A1E Sky Raider. What did you see? Um, this plane, Sky Raider, pulls up after striking a target. But this picture is very cool. Like, <clears throat> it's ex it, yeah, it dropped a, a, a bomb. And then here is it crashed. In a F-100F, North American Super Saber. This is McDonnell RF-101C. You also have uh, some vehicles in this. It's an intercept van from the Vietnam War. Ali is reading uh, Air Force, women in the Air Force, especially during the Southeast Asia War. And this is uh, where I was saying that they have these signs here with an arrow. If you look up, you can check out the planes. And this one I think is right above us. Okay, so this is a B-57B, it has machine guns on his nose, a B-26K get a better view. Search and rescue. I'm gonna go through it. Okay, 
what do we have here? We have a number of helicopters. I mean, of, of course, that's a classic UH-1P. You see that helicopter up there, Alia? Oh. We ever seen su have you ever seen such a thing? You no. see the smokestack pipe in the back? How big that is. Yeah. This is the back area. Uh, there are definitely some cool airplanes like the C-7A with the puffy nose. And this is the C-123K provider. Okay, so this is a MiG-17F. It's a C used in Southeast Asia. Uh, AQM-34L. I don't think I've ever seen this many airplanes in my life. Um, a military aircraft and we have been to aviation museums, military museums uh, around the United States. We continue to do that from time to time. We travel, we make hotel videos, cruise videos, we go to different cities like in Ecuador or Portugal. But then from time to time in each city we try to do something cultural, something historic for the kids to also learn and, um, you know, of course, uh, learn the history never been to an aircraft museum this massive of course the largest uh, air force museum in the world look at this one alia whispering death it's a f-111 it was used in southeast asia check out the drone up fun fact if a gunship is flying overhead it would deter the other enemy from attacking. Oh, so they, that's how they use the gunships then? Yes. Okay, we are short on time, but nobody can pass going inside this plane. You? All right, so we're gonna walk into the C-124 Globemaster II. So we are inside the Globemaster. I do appreciate that they have uh, open some of these planes. Oh, by the way, because this is where people sit. So here's the side of the Globemaster, some rescue helicopters. So this is the other end of the gallery. Okay. Now we are heading to gallery number one. We started from number four. We saw Space R&D Presidential Global. We saw the missile launch or the missile gallery. Then we went into Cold War. Then we went to the Korea and the Southeast Asia. That's where we are right now. There's a National Aviation Hall of Fame, and World War II and early years are here. We go back to the atrium. Aviation Hall of Fame, that's the Wrights Brothers plane. Uh, fun fact, that actual plane is very close to here. Uh, it's in Ohio, uh, most definitely. We were gonna go check this out, or come to this museum. We decided the museum next time, we'll definitely go check out the very first working airplane in the world. So we're right back where we first started. This is the gallery number one. This is all about World War II. This is exactly where Alia did the intro when we first entered this museum. This is B-18A, right at the entrance. This is P-40E. The shark face will scare all the bad guys right out of the air. This is AT-9 fledging Jeep. It's a Curtis. This is an AT-11. B24D. This is a Piper L4A Grasshopper. So look at the Memphis Bell looking all shiny and beautiful. I was saying to Alia, I really appreciate it. I don't think I've seen this in other aviation museums that they have lifted the planes up on stilts, which really, really adds to the display. BF109 G10CV is a Misha Smith um, that was a pretty mean fighter in World War II. Look at the B-26G, again from World War II. Alia, did you see the biplane hanging above it? Yeah. Alia, do you know we have been inside that airplane in the cradle of aviation yes, museum in, in Long, Long Island? Island. I and know. they actually, that museum actually offers uh, a plane ride for $500. You can, they will take you up in the sky and bring you down and they, you get to wear um, World War II uniform. Did you see the gunner position oh, in the back? Yes. So this is where the gunner would be sitting in the back of this plane. This is a Mi-163B Comet. 
it's a Mischersmith. So it's a rocket-powered defensive fighter and it was one of the most unusual aircraft in World War II. Fortunately, its potential impact was minimized by technical problems and the small number produced. They're helping the little boy uh, in war. They're offering him chocolate because chocolate used to be a pretty um, sought after thing. Not a lot of kids or people would have chocolate, especially in the time of war. This is the Misha Smith uh, jet fighter. On uh, 25th of July 1944, this became the first jet airplane used in combat when it attacked the British photo uh, um, mosquito flying over Munich. As a fighter, the German jet scored heavily against Allied bombers. Um, this was definitely a game changer when Germany introduced this plane. Okay, this is a P61C. This is a MXY7 trainer. Okay, look at this Italian flying machine. Now this is the right military flyer. So here's a surprise. How can this thing fly? And yeah, this was the very first airplane that actually flew. Pigeons were used in World War II to help deliver messages. Oh. Sorry, pigeons. So are you saying that that was the... A pigeon, like a real pigeon. Or did it have GPS on it? No, it's a regular <laughs> pigeon. You can see the gallery, the very first gallery that starts the whole um, aviation, the history. Okay, we just came across something. Let's go find out what this is. What is it, Alia? A wind tunnel? Yeah. So this is from 1918. Really liking this airplane. It's called a bug. You know what it looks like? It's a torpedo. That's a bug. And our time is up. And our time is up. Guess what? We have done this whole tour. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but we did this whole tour in 2 hours 15 minutes with a couple of breaks. Um, so it is possible. And I don't think, even though we've walked fast, I don't think it felt rushed to us. So, and if it helps, just know that there's total four hangars. We tried to divide our time, but we spent the most time in hangar number four, where there were more planes where you were allowed to go in. There were more uh, visually attractive uh, machines in the hangar three. So you do want to save, if you start uh, linear, if you're starting from one, two, three, four, then do make sure to save some good amount of time for hangar three and four. Hangar two and one are amazing, but you can do them a little bit faster than the other two. Continuing showing uh, gallery number one. Uh, there's a couple of planes in the back. Let's quickly walk through those um, to complete this tour. By the way, look at the gunner on this one out in the open. Alia, oh, yeah, I will say that is a very cool looking plane. Human beings are incredible. Yeah. Human beings are incredible in, at inventing. In, with their invention, with their creativity and their skill. That's another one. But you can see the front is open and the pilot's probably sitting there with the breeze hitting him and giant engines on the wing. If you are into cars, yes, they do have some trucks. Uh, sporadically uh, displayed but all tied to aviation history. Now this little cute thing is called a pea shooter. It's a P26A. Again on gallery number one, plane hanging from the ceiling and I absolutely love the front gunner uh, dome on this airplane. It's uh, pretty creative and quite inviting to shoot at. For those of you wondering, this was the B-10 Marlin. This is Jacqueline Cochran. I believe she was a pilot. It's an A-17A attack airplane. Fully close out this tour. You can see some additional planes right at the entrance of uh, gallery number one. They do have a Valkyrie Cafe here as well. So let's exit. We'll stop at the shop for a few seconds just to show you what the shop looks like. Oh, they even have bomber jackets. Carolina Reaper hand grenade hot sauces.
We also have some drinks, places where you can sit. So this is the whole shop. Okay, last but not least, they do have a museum theater here. They do say if you have time, don't miss what they're showing. I do think they were showing Top Gun in this theater. You can see all the air museums and aviation things, including the Wright Brothers National Museum, uh, where the actual plane is, and the Wright uh, B Fly. Oh, that's where the actual plane is, I think, number four. But you can see Ohio, all about aviation. We really hope we were able to do justice and give you a fine tour of the largest military aviation museum in the world. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, Bye. for now. Oh, is there behind you? What? Do you like fighter planes? It's incredible, but I don't feel what I feel for the commercial airplanes. Yeah, like with a, them. a 767 oh, or a, or a, a 747. 747. Or any of them. Yeah. If this was a movie, this would be, <sighs> this would be a scene in the movie. <sighs> when you watch yourself in the bloopers, you're going to regret this decision. <laughs> this is not going on the video. This may be the coolest gallery. I don't know. I don't know what to decide anymore. You say that about each one of them. Oh. Okay, another another thing going in the blooper. Yeah, it's a, it has a tiny propeller in the front. Look at that. What is that? What does it even do? Uh, if you get too hot, you can turn on the fan. Bye, National Museum of the United States Air Force. Bye, Ohio Air Force, largest museum in the world.